actually is a coronal mass ejection or a CME. Well the corona is the area of plasma which surrounds the sun. It can most clearly be seen during an eclipse. That ring of light which appears around the moon during an eclipse is a corona. At times vast quantities of corona are forced away from the sun and this is a coronal mass ejection. Cletus calls to two relevant questions. What causes a CME and is it dangerous for us on Earth? Well, we view a CME as being similar to a volcanic eruption on Earth. The mass ejection is just the final result, like the lava spewing out of the top of the volcano. Now on Earth, the driving force of that volcano is much deeper under the surface with a pool of magma powering the volcano. And rather surprisingly, inside the sun, instead of lava building up, it's the magnetism inside the sun which causes the pressure which releases in the form of a CME. The sun actually has a lot of magnetic activity going on within its structure, but unlike the Earth, where the magnetism has a fairly clearly defined pattern, the sun has vast loops of magnetic fields which fluctuate and merge in a constantly changing pattern. And where the tops of these loops break the surface, that's where the sunspots occur, bringing large amounts of plasma from the lower reaches up towards the surface. So because the gas of the sun is under tremendous pressure, but the magnetic fields also create their own pressure, like when you try and push two north poles of two magnets together. This increased pressure, like squeezing a balloon, needs to be released somehow. The only way is upwards and outwards until it breaks the surface. Now, due to the rotation of the sun, these sunspots tend to occur towards the equator and have a series of peaks and troughs over about an 11 year cycle. The link between sunspots, solar flares and coronal mass ejections is basically just one of scale. And the lines of magnetic fields become twisted and cause an explosion in the outer layers of the sun, resulting in a solar flare. And these twisted lines of magnetism suddenly reverse or snap back and they can cause huge amounts of matter to be ejected, resulting in the CME. So when these magnetic storms do appear on the surface of the Sun, how does it alter this situation back on Earth? Well, there's some good news and some bad news about this. Firstly, because the Sun is a huge ball of gas about eight light minutes away from Earth, the vast majority of the time, all of these regions of activity on the surface of the Sun are actually pointing away from the Earth. So even with their high level of frequency, and we're really directly in the path of these events. Also, this light takes just over eight minutes to cross the distance from the sun to the earth. And the sun is constantly being observed by quite a few astronomers in different places around the world. It means that even the fastest CMEs, which travel in excess of 3,000 kilometers per second, or about 1% of the speed of light, can't catch us by surprise, will know they're coming. Bad news is what happens when they arrive. Now, general fluctuations in sunspot activity change weather, wind, and other related issues, resulted in changes in droughts and fire risks. These are fairly regular fluctuation. Solar flares can interrupt communications and knock out satellites. But when warned of their arrival, satellites can power down to minimize the potential damage. Now, that leaves us with more powerful CMEs. These are rarer. There's about a 1% chance each year that the Earth will be struck by a significant CME. There have been some recent near misses, but we do know that we were hit in 1859 by what's known as the Carrington event, and in 1921. And this resulted in electric shocks of people using things like telegraph machines and widespread blowing of fuses, and a glow from the aurora which made people think that the sun was actually rising in the morning. However, that was at a time when the number of electrical devices in operation was actually relatively small. If one were to hit now, unless a power system could somehow be protected from its effects, the disruption caused by a CME could be widespread and long-lasting. With items like electrical transformers being damaged, it could take years to restore the electrical power system to where it was before. So that's a coronal mass ejection, a rare event, one that needs some serious planning to minimise the potential damage.